Hey guys, what's up? If you are playing the Divine Force or are already done with it or you're planning on playing it in the future, maybe you'd like to know if the other games in the series are worth playing or how does the Divine Force compare to them. I'll tell you all about it in this video besides mentioning their place in the Star Ocean chronology. So let's begin! Alright, we're gonna start with Star Ocean First Departure. It was originally released on the Super Famicom exclusive to Japan, but it's been fan translated already. I haven't played this version so I can't really talk about it, but from what I've seen it's a well-respected game in the community. The version I played was its remake on the PSP, released worldwide in 2007. Honestly, I think this is one of the most balanced games in the series, which makes it perfect for beginners. It's not the first in the chronology, but hell, it's the first Star Ocean ever made. However, because of that you have to remember it's a remake of a Super Famicom RPG, which means it's not gonna be as long as many modern RPGs nowadays. If you stick to the main story, you can beat it in less than 20 hours. You don't have a dual protagonist though, you play as Roddick, who's part of a small town's guard. Of course, space travelers land in his underdeveloped planet and drag Roddick and his friends into all sorts of trouble. There's a point in the game where you'll be able to choose a small route between Roddick or Millie, which will last for a few hours, but that's about it. So you've got a solid story, interesting cast, balanced difficulty and old school gameplay. I think combat is easy to understand and get into, but it's one of those that'll get tough the more you progress. This PSP version got remastered a couple of years ago for PS4 and Switch, in case you're interested, even though it's only digital. First Departure is the second game in the Star Ocean chronology so far, taking place in the year 2442. Overall, it's a great game, worth playing, recommended despite not being one of the best in the series. Next, it's the second story. This is a sequel to First Departure, protagonist now being Cloud Kenny, the son of Ronix and Ilya, the two space travelers from the first game. However, you don't need to play it to understand this one. As a matter of fact, all Star Ocean games are standalone. They just take place in the same universe and have some family roots and a federation connecting them, but that's about it. However, this sequel is far harder than its predecessor. It does have some nasty spikes with some bosses and near the end, the main story turns out to be a huge grindfest. Without leveling up, your chances of beating it will be very slim. Despite being one of the best in the series, if not the best, I don't really recommend it for beginners, unless they have experience with hardcore action RPGs. Nevertheless, it's an RPG with great pacing and difficulty. It'll start pretty easy and go from there little by little, getting harder and harder the more you advance. Combat has been refined and it feels better than ever, once again easy to understand and get into. Plus, you have now another protagonist you can choose at the beginning, Rena Landford. Though I will say that about 80 or 90% of the events are the same no matter which character you choose. It takes place 20 years after first departure in the year 2452. Of course, this game is very, very worth playing. Tose, the company who remade the first game, also did the same with this one on the PSP, but no remastered version has appeared yet, as of the making of this video, sadly. Moving on to Star Ocean till the end of time. You play as Fate, who lives a peaceful life until his planet is invaded by an ancient alien race starting a war with the Pan-Galactic Federation. Upon escaping on a ship, his pod crashes on an underdeveloped medieval type of planet and there you go, classic Star Ocean plot. No dual protagonists here, though it does have a surprise female lead. The game makes you believe at the beginning one girl is the main heroine until you realize she's not. Anyway, you've probably heard this is by far the most convoluted Star Ocean ever made, due mainly to its battle mechanics. Yes, it's hard to get into, even though it starts kinda easy for the first few hours, but yeah, it gets really tough later on if you didn't learn how to fight properly. Creating combos derives from the HP and MP bars, and some really wacky controls, 
Camera isn't too bad, but it can move around annoyingly sometimes. Using special attacks consumes health, something I always believed to be stupid, but it's manageable. There's also a bonus battle gauge, and if its bar fills up, you technically get more powerful. Achieving it, however, is a bit of a pain. Now, don't be too scared from this game's combat. Once you understand its basics, trust me, it can really be a blast. I do recommend it, just not for beginners, unless they are experienced. Chronologically speaking, this is the last game in the series so far, taking place in the year 2858. That's right, 404 years after the second story. It's worth playing despite its unfriendly battle mechanics. It's on PS2 and with a digital version with upscale graphics on the PS4. Both versions usually dirt cheap. Star Ocean The Last Hope is one of my favorites. I think it's greatly balanced, not convoluted, and not as spiky as its two predecessors. This game is excellent for beginners, and it includes a fantastic story, great characters, awesome graphics, and awesome combat. The pacing is just like in all the previous Star Ocean games. Slow at first, then it picks up. Unlike them, however, there's no plot about space travelers crashing on underdeveloped planets. Instead, you have a ship almost from the start, and you play as Captain Edge Maverick on a quest to find a suitable planet for humanity to live on. All this because Earth is no longer safe to inhabit. That's right, you guessed it, this is the very first Star Ocean game in the chronology, taking place in the year 2096. Yikes, that means according to Triace, this planet will be done for in less than 74 years. Eh, don't worry, we'll all be dead by then. The Last Hope introduced the blind sides during battle. A good evasion will trigger it if you move at the right time, creating then a badass counterattack to your enemies. You gotta learn how to do it as better as you can though, as it's mandatory for a few bosses. This game came out on the Xbox 360, PS3, and later upscaled digitally on the PS4. I recommend the two later versions as the 360 one is kind of unbalanced for some reason. It's still worth playing if you don't have a PS3 or 4 though. This is one of the best in the series, so of course it's very, very worth it no matter where you play it. Next is Star Ocean Integrity and Fatelessness. Here we have the black sheep of the family, a rushed game during development with issues between Triace and Square Enix. They planned it as some kind of reboot in the series, but ended up being its own game, thankfully. But it's kinda like in First Departure, where your main characters are part of the town's guard. One day two space travelers arrive, it changes everything from them, and well, you know the deal. However, the story isn't handled like in First Departure though, it's well structured and planned, yes, but it lacks the charisma, it also lacks decent character development and interesting protagonists. You can beat the main story in about 15 hours or so, I'm not kidding. Gameplay is fine, immersive even though it feels unrefined in some areas. Combat, however, is the worst in the series, and is the reason why I can't properly recommend this game without warning. Instead of controlling your usual four characters, you have a seven character party to worry about. I usually love the idea of the more the merrier, but it's poorly executed in this game since it's extremely unbalanced. It jumps from super easy to super hard in seconds between regular enemies and bosses. It also has a horrendous camera that makes fighting unenjoyable. I still beat this game, so that means I liked it, but I don't think it's very worth playing, maybe just out of curiosity if you see it for dirt cheap. In the chronology, it takes place between Star Ocean 2 and 3 in the year 2623. It's only on PS4 though, because its PS3 version remained in Japan. And finally, we have The Divine Force. Since I just made a review for this game, I'll be very quick. Of course, I recommend watching my review before making your decision on playing it, but if you want my advice, then by all means do it, as it's very, very worth playing. But I suggest waiting for the price to drop. It's an excellent game, not without its technical problems, none of them ruining the experience though. The only thing to worry about is that the balance is tragically once again all over the place, like in Star Ocean 5. 
The big difference though is that combat here is amazing and already my favorite in the series. Anyway, chronology is after the fifth game taking place in the year 2670. It's on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and Steam. Definitely recommend it. If you're wondering about Blue Sphere and the Game Boy Color, I haven't played much of it. I'd say it's worth playing if you really, really love the second story since it's a straight-up direct sequel to it. It never came out of Japan, but it's been fan-translated for a while. Anyway, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you found it informative and I hope you enjoy the series if you decide to get into it. Yes, the Divine Force is a good place to start. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!